uh, to technicals. Uh, we will start now. Okay. So, uh, oh, welcome to uh, welcome to everyone. Okay. Uh, my name is Phil Muhammad. Okay. I'm from uh, UK Westy Chair for Sustainability, U uh, University of Pakistan, Malaysia, and I'll be your moderator today. Right. So before we start our webinar today, okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Adia, for joining us. Okay, so these are some basic house rules, okay, for all. Uh, to all participants, uh, please keep your mic on mute at all the time, okay. And then this webinar will be available on Zoom, and you can watch the chair for sustainability's Facebook page as well, okay. So please uh, feel free to share this uh, uh, FB page to your friends and colleagues, okay. Uh, the link uh, for attendance will be given at the end of the session. Okay, so please wait uh, until the end. Okay, if you uh, want uh, certificates or you want uh, you can back up for UCAM staff. A uh, question and answer session will be open at the end of the session. Okay, so the audience, okay, you can either choose. Okay, first uh, you can uh, be allow you to ask directly to Prof Enya. Okay, or you can uh, write the questions on the chat uh, uh, session. Okay, I'll read it for you at the end of the session. Or uh, if you are uh, listening uh, with us uh, from Facebook, okay, we will also collect the question from there as well. Okay, and uh, we at the chair we provide a digital background, okay, and uh, it will be shared on our uh, chat uh, session. Okay, so please feel free uh, to download a digital background, okay, and uh, we will use it during our photo session at the end. Okay, and uh, for more information, okay, uh, for our programs, okay, under you can Wesley Chair for Sustainability, okay, please uh, feel free to uh, to follow our social media. On Facebook and Instagram and also on Twitter as well, right? So, Prof. Enya, okay, uh, we will start our uh, talk, okay? So, please allow me uh, to welcome, okay, Prof. Enya, okay, from uh, Badan Research, uh, uh, Badan Research dan Inovasi National Indonesia. Uh, Prof, welcome to our uh, webinar today, right? So, on behalf of uh, 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 the organizer, okay, uh, I welcome uh, everyone to our monthly webinar, okay, organized by UKMYC Chair. For sustainability, Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment, UKM. My name is Dr. Pir Muhammad. Okay, I'm the manager of UKM YC Chair. Okay, we'll, and we'll be moderating today's webinar. This webinar is jointly organized by the Department of Chemical Process Engineering, JKKP, and by Research Center for Sustainable uh, Process Technology, CESPO, Malaysia Academic Research on Palm Oil Sustainability, ALPOS and also supported by Clean Energy Special Instance Group, ICAMI, and Badan Research dan Inovasi National Print Indonesia. So please allow me, okay, a brief introduction uh, for our uh, speaker today, okay. Our special speaker today actually is a uh, Professor Dr. Engineer Inia Listiani Devi from Brin Indonesia. Prof. Enya is a very passionate supporter of a hydrogen society. She is involved for more than 20 years in developing various technology advancing the use of hydrogen in our society. She completed her bachelor, master, and PhD from prestigious university Waseda from Japan, eh, Prof? Okay. Yeah. So she's also the founder and chairperson of uh, Indonesia Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Technology Association and the board director of International Association of Hydrogen Energy. Over the years of service, she has published more than 200 publications and numerous awards for her excellence in research and also community engagement. So indeed, a very versatile researcher. Without further ado, I would like to invite Prof. Enya okay, to share with us on the hydrogen landscape in Indonesia. Prof, the floor is yours. Okay, So you can share uh, your slides and uh, the talk with our speaker, well, with our audience yeah, Prof. Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, to inviting me for uh, Dr. Muhammad and also for all of the uh, student and participant here from Malaysia, especially from UKM. Uh, I'm really happy to hear with you and uh, I will share a little bit uh, progress in Indonesia. Uh, especially for the hydrogen and uh, fuel cells technology that we are doing now. So uh, I will start my slide here. Mm, I hope you can see can see that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's good, Prof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. This is uh, Dr. Muhammad gave me an interesting uh, topic here. 
uh, emphasizing the hydrogen movements uh, for island especially. Uh, do you know the location of this this big run? <laughs> so uh, no uh, this is very uh, yes, very nice place. Uh, hope you can see Indonesia, but you can you must fly to Bali at first, and then one flight from Bali, but uh, just thirty minutes. Uh, then you can reach the Labuan Bajo. This is uh, Bajo. now a famous tourist destination. And you can climb this uh, small mountain and you can see the different colors of the uh, ocean. It is very nice. I uh, Maybe in the next two years, I will invite uh, the chemistry community to be here because uh, there is so much uh, interesting uh, location at here also. And you can see the Komodo. This near the Komodo oh. Islands. Komodo Island. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... Um, Dr. Mohammed is already uh, giving the introduction that uh, I'm graduated from Waseda University, and then uh, now I'm the professor research at Brin. Uh, before I was the uh, deputy chairperson from uh, BPPT. It's just like an application of technology agency, and then we now uh, to be uh, just one research uh, agency in Indonesia right now, but it's a very big one. It's called uh, Badan Riset Inovasi Nasional that we call BRIN now. And uh, we have 15,000 uh, researcher. So it is a very big, big one. So uh, talking about the hydrogen journey, I will start with the uh, our collaboration with UKM. So this is a uh, really honor to know the professor Van Ramli Van Daud. Maybe uh, you know him so well. So yes. uh, he is the first partner of ours in, in the terms of uh, fuel cells and hydrogen technology. So after I graduate from uh, Japan, then I back to my agency and then um, starting uh, to study the fuel cells uh, technology and then now move to the more to the hydrogen one. So uh, in 2007, uh, I make a first seminar for the fuel cells technology. We inviting the personnel from uh, NADO and person from, uh, especially from Japan. And then uh, the Honda also support us. And then I especially invite the uh, person from uh, Malaysia at that time, Prof. Wan Ramli and this uh, professor from uh, Singapore. Uh, then uh, also now the uh, the big professor in Kyushu University, maybe you know uh, him also. Uh, he is, uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, uh, Sasaki, Sasaki uh, Sensei. Now, uh, and then uh, we have uh, so many collaboration with Malaysia. At that time, we showing the uh, fuel cells uh, uh, prototyping, and then uh, we make firstly uh, the motorcycle of hydrogen. I think Malaysia have uh, moved uh, the same time, and then uh, now we we flew every. Um, we oftenly uh, join, uh, make a joint uh, international collaboration. And then uh, before COVID, uh, I met uh, Professor Wan Ramli, and then uh, we make a sa signing MOU between uh, Indonesia, fuel cells and hydrogen energy. And, and also uh, Malaysia have uh, Malaysia Association of Hydrogen Energy. This is a really uh, nice place to, to know and then uh, I'm visit also the Institute of Fuel Cell uh, in UKM in, in your uh, facility. And then uh, last year, I uh, met uh, Dr. Uh, Eddie Majlan, yeah, and then yeah. Professor Arshad from UTM. I think it's a, a big uh, professor also in, in the terms of hydrogen, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is uh, very good uh, to know it. And uh, I hope students also can uh, join our annual meeting uh, in the next, in, in this year, uh, in yeah. September, yeah? In September, we will yes. have also the International Conference of Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Energy. And hopefully, uh, our link 
is uh, already noted by International of Hydrogen uh, Association. Uh, then uh, they always uh, publish the uh, Q1 journal, uh, IGHE. Yeah, so so we can uh, we can make a stronger uh, movement between Indonesia and Malaysia, and hopefully this will continue again and again. So yes, uh, uh, yeah, it is uh, my my voice is uh, clear, not oh, uh, well, okay, okay, yeah, okay. okay, sure. And and the last uh, last. Uh, uh, at the end of the year of, of, of last year, we establishing the uh, hydrogen day uh, and uh, we have a community right here. Uh, now our association also have a member from uh, Toyota, from Yamaha, from uh, PLN and also from Pertamina. There's uh, several uh, industry now join us, not only the university and then research institute, but we now, our community uh, going big, bigger, uh, including the industry. So uh, getting into the next topic, uh, you are already know that uh, we are facing up the uh, climate change and, and some of you maybe uh, ever, go landing to Jakarta and you will see it's a little bit, this is not cloudy, but this is the uh, the pollutant of the uh, air uh, because before COVID we have no uh, view like here, but but now it's going back to, uh, to be uh, like a cloud again. This is, this is uh, increase a, a big, because of the uh, the transportation, and uh, last year I'm also joining the uh, research and development of the G20 member states, and one of the uh, professor Christopher Hebling here uh, told us that uh, the CO2 increase and then uh, the temperature increase. Uh, start from uh, one eighteen eighteen thousand. 18,000 year in the year of 18,000 start and then uh, the global temperature is increased right now comparing to to almost uh, to to a century yeah. and then uh, you know the uh, atmospheric CO2 concentration also increase so this is uh, the fact that that we are facing up the uh, the climate change. So uh, maybe you know that Indonesia will move to the uh, new capital right here in Kalimantan, yeah. Uh, and uh, we we will move uh, starting from this year, I think, or, or the next year. But uh, uh, now uh, government is uh, pushing the uh, development around there. So I think this is a new uh, opportunity for us also to make a renewable uh, energy from even a hydro or maybe we have a palm and so on. And uh, I think you know a little bit Indonesia language. Sumber energinya adalah berasal dari renewable energy. Our president wants the renewable energy in this new capital. Kemudian 80% transportasinya adalah transportasi umum, autonomous vehicle, tanpa awak dan tanpa sopir. Jadi yang kita hargai di sana adalah pejalan kaki, yang kita hargai di sana adalah orang yang senang naik sepeda. 10 minutes city, jarak tempuh kemana-mana itu ada dalam... 10 menit. Sekali lagi, inilah showcase transformasi Indonesia. Showcase perubahan peradaban Indonesia. Dan budaya kerja yang ingin kita bangun di IKN Nusantara adalah budaya kerja produktif. Oke, okay, that's the new capital that called Nusantara. And uh, our hope is uh, so much renewable energy at there. So hopefully uh, the government realizing this uh, plan 
to make a new capital. Yeah, now in Indonesia talking about the investment, but I am sure that uh, this new capital also uh, will be a good opportunity for us for young generation to make a new movement, yeah, new transformation. So uh, talking about the climate, uh, because uh, our new capital have a vision of the renewable energy. So uh, the Indonesia have a commitment. I, I, uh, I think Ma Malaysia have also uh, the target to, to reduce uh, GHG uh, emission right here. Uh, we we as uh, we committed that uh, Indonesia will make a carbon meter at and twenty sixty or maybe uh, all over the world claim to be twenty fifty, uh, but Indonesia is a little bit ten uh, years later, but. But if there is an international commitment and international contribution, uh, so uh, we want more sooner. And then uh, what we going to do with this, uh, this carbon neutral? Because we must reduce the uh, emission. So we accelerate the uh, renewable development also, and then uh, much uh, moving on the uh, low emission and also going to the free carbon uh, society in, in the future. So, you know, the potential of the renewable uh, energy in Indonesia is uh, really quite big. And then uh, this, you can see the number, the solar uh, potential number is uh, 3000 gigawatt, but now just only installed uh, around 200 and uh, not more than 300 megawatt. So the potential is uh, really big for the solar. And also with the hydro, with hydro, we have uh, 95 gigawatt, uh, but the install capacity is only uh, 6,000 uh, mega. And, and so, so with the others uh, renewable, like uh, wind, geothermal, and also tidal. We, we're not starting the tidal because, because this uh, cost uh, really high. Uh, I think we we focusing on this uh, five renewable energy is uh, enough for for us to realizing the carbon neutral. But uh, if we have a, a good investment on the tidal, uh, why not? So uh, the transition toward the sustainable energy, uh, we are now moving step by step. Uh, as a brain, as a Badan Research Innovasi Nasional, we suggest uh, the government to do uh, the biofuel program. Uh, you, you know, I, I think in Malaysia it's already uh, like B20, I think, yeah. And uh, now uh, Indonesia accelerated to be B30, and then uh, this year would be B40. So uh, this is uh, a, new, a new movement of our uh, ministry here already talking about B40 and then now uh, they prepare uh, the implementation for the uh, passenger car here and this is already have a road test starting last year and then this year maybe uh, in the end of March uh, would be a uh, result from the B40. I think there is no uh, such kind of a uh, uh, barrier to make an implementation of the B40. So the SNI, the standard of national uh, Indonesia standard, and we, we make the new standard for here. And of, of, of course, the performance test for the train, the genses, uh, heavy duty vehicle, and also uh, in maritime, we have a performance test uh, right now. And then uh, the other movement is uh, like a co-firing. Uh, now we have uh, many power plant uh, that, uh, being operated by PLN. This is a national state-owned company of electricity. Uh, PLN have a 60% of coal right now, and they make a 20 until, uh, yeah, 10, 10 and until 20% of uh, biomass uh, have been co-firing in the uh, power plant. So the other one is uh, refused derived fuel. This is a uh, the process uh, from the waste to fuel, how to make a, a new flu, new fuel and a briquette to, to make a, a co-firing also at here. And 
And then uh, we have also the digitalization uh, program. Um, we make uh, the study of also the implementation of even a uh, fuel cells, not only uh, the digitalization with the geothermal, with the biogas or biomass, but uh, now we consider about uh, the fuel cells. And uh, of course, carbon capture storage, uh, this is uh, not new things in, in refinery. We, we already have a, a carbon capture storage uh, facility in the refinery. Uh, and then this uh, CCS has also been, uh, will implement in the power plant also. And, uh, you know, the electric vehicle also have a very big uh, portion uh, in Indonesia. Uh, I will talk to you a little bit more uh, after this. And uh, about the PV, we are uh, considered about the PV rooftop, plowing, plot, PV and also the e-mobility smart grid and area. And uh, after the G20 meeting last year, Indonesia have accelerated the blue and green hydrogen uh, facility to supply the, especially for petrochemicals industry and uh, another industry, and also start to think about the uh, transportation application. So this is the uh, the example of the biogas facility. I think it is uh, similar with the Malaysia because we uh, uh, we make a biomethane for from the waste of a pome, this uh, palm mill oil effluent. It's a uh, like a liquid waste from the uh, palm industry. No, we we put the uh, biogas technology at the industry in Sumatra Island. Uh, this is the example that uh, those industry already make a new carbon uh, credit uh, to them to make a new facility for the uh, uh, the benefit of the uh, biogas that implemented on this area. And also, uh, this is uh, the few example of the uh, electric vehicle movement in Indonesia. You can see the uh, conversion, the program of uh, how to make a conversion uh, from the uh, conventional uh, vehicle to the electric vehicle. So uh, the aim of the, this program is to make multifunction economy. We can make a new mechanical here, uh, new electric motor uh, industry, and also the battery industry and also uh, the scheme of the swap uh, station and so on. So talking about the emission effect, there is uh, more than 3.8 million ton of CO2 will be reduced in a year. So this is an ongoing program. And uh, I will show you uh, our, my activity also in, in since 2018, uh, I'm accelerate the uh, electric vehicle. This is me. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm riding the uh, electric vehicle now. It's common in Indonesia, but I want to make it more uh, more people using the electric vehicle. So the government now uh, give the um, special funding, uh, not special funding. It's an incentive incentive to person uh, that buy the electric vehicle. I don't know right now in in Malaysia. Maybe you can tell me later on. So, uh, Joko, we have commitment to make uh, decarbonization in Indonesia. So we will achieve uh, 2060. Uh, but now, uh, our uh, the in the research community, we're talking about the percentage of the renewable energy have already uh, implemented. It's still 14 percent. So uh, it should be. Uh, more aggressive uh, acceleration of the implementing of re renewable energy. So the step of uh, our president uh, movement is uh, to stop the coal uh, power plant and then uh, would introducing nuclear on grid in uh, 2049 and uh, also make a hydrogen society uh, in the future. And of course, uh, in, in between uh, from now, until uh, carbon neutral uh, year, we must uh, thinking about the energy transition strategic scenario. And you know, Indonesia have a big islands, uh, have a lot of islands. So uh, the 
the main uh, problem here is how to distribute the energy and all of the people in the remote area in the village can uh, have the accessibility to the uh, energy in a good way. So uh, there is no such uh, increasing uh, payment. Uh, they know about the technology so they can maintain. And also uh, there is a innovative finance to get uh, the fine funding. And uh, now we're talking about the how international assistance can be contribute on our society also. And then the next one, uh, we know the technology must be uh, must be uh, implemented as well as uh, as such as a transfer technology and so on. And then uh, the point is how to make people also contribute with the energy. So uh, they have a new economy uh, during the. Uh, energy transition in, in Indonesia. So the answer could be the hydrogen. So uh, we're not only talking about just uh, a biomass and uh, new of the uh, fuels, and uh, we want to accelerate the, uh, to lowering the carbon. So we're talking about the hydrogen right now. So not just only me, starting 20 years ago, only, it's like uh, only me that uh, talking with the government about the hydrogen, but now we can, uh, many people talking about the hydrogen. So uh, many aggressive, uh, uh, progressive uh, movement now in Indonesia. So uh, I think I will skip this because you know already the hydrogen is a, uh, as abandoned materials in the universe, but uh, now we can we, we must get uh, the hydrogen from uh, the other uh, resources. Even there is a natural hydrogen uh, just coming out from the earth. Uh, funding uh, it was found uh, in the uh, Brazil and in Chile. There is a natural hydrogen, but uh, but uh, there is no not a big. Uh, gas uh, coming out with the hydrogen in the pure, we must uh, get the hydrogen from the other resources that we call a second, second uh, energy. So uh, talking about the uh, hydrogen production uh, method here, uh, I introduce you uh, about the fossil fuel methods, and then there is a renewable source uh, method. Mm, we are now talking about this area, yeah. So how we can make a biomass uh, process to get the, uh, the, to get the hydrogen, even uh, in the root of biotechnological uh, uh, method and in the root of the thermochemical method. And uh, you know about the water splitting. So uh, we can got uh, the hydrogen and oxygen from the water. So another, uh, another this area is already happened now in all of the world and all over the world, and then all over the industry, uh, they already have uh, fossil fuel uh, resources to make the hydrogen. So I think uh, all of you uh, know that already have the um, industry uh, to have uh, hydrogen. And uh, in the implementation side, you know that uh, the hydrogen is being used for the pharmaceutical application and also the for the synthetic fuel and to upgrading biofuel like a biodiesel, just I talked before, a bit 40, the biodiesel. It is also need the hydrogen to make a upgrading of the biofuel. And then of course, in ammonia industry, in fertilizer industry, we need the hydrogen. And this is consumed so much, uh, hydrogen even in Indonesia. This is the biggest one. And then the other is for chemicals industry. And uh, that's uh, the hydrogen that coming out from uh, the coal, we call brown hydrogen. And then coming out from a gas, we call uh, gray hydrogen is the color of the hydrogen. And then if we capturing the CO2, we can got the blue hydrogen. And and then uh, if the hydrogen coming out from the reaction uh, of the nuclear fission with the thermo or with the uh, electrolyzer, we call pink hydrogen. And then the last one we call 
a green hydrogen. This is a green one is using uh, the renewable resources like, like a photovoltaic, like a wind turbine, like a geothermal and others, and also the hydro, uh, the water. So uh, maybe you know also the process of the hydrogenation in the industry, such as uh, if we make a disinfectant or we make a, a bleaching, we, uh, we have a peroxide here. And then we have also, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I'll continue. We have a hydrogenation process in the uh, food processing industry, like uh, to make a shortening or like um, make margarine. Well, and and in Indonesia also, I think in Malaysia have to also if we have a PVC industry, we have an excess hydrogen. This is uh, especially we now trying to get uh, the excess hydrogen from the industry, so we can calculate it and then collect it. How to make the utilization of that hydrogen? So from from power plant also we have an excess hydrogen because they the the power plant only use the hydrogen for for the cooling and then uh, of course uh, waste from the heat of the steelwork if we can uh, use it also as a cogeneration and then uh, just uh, several uh, excess from the gas industry so uh, thinking about the uh, infrastructure and the ecosystem we must uh, putting uh, this opportunity uh, many opportunity around around the area so we can think about how we can uh, make uh, the utilization of that hydrogen. And uh, about the hydrogen value change, uh, I already mentioned you about the how we can uh, produce the hydrogen. And then the next one, how we can distribute and can storage the hydrogen and then make a utilization of it. So uh, this, we can combust, make a combustion. We can uh, go with the turbine and also uh, the transportation and chemicals. So um, in the term of the distribution, uh, we must think about the area and how we can produce from what. So uh, which one would be the next uh, line to make in some area because Indonesia is island. So we must think several uh, steps here to implement it. If we, we can implement it in Sumatra Island, different from the Sulawesi Island. So I will see you the differences uh, after here. Uh, we, we can make from the coal and so on. You can see this, but uh, the important things is the pipeline. So uh, the pipeline regulation also have a, a big uh, problem now in Indonesia we, because we not yet a specific uh, regulation. So I will share you uh, my dream. My dream is how to make the hydrogen city uh, over here. And then uh, until now, I, I uh, still cannot realizing my dream, but I uh, uh, running with, with my dream. It's uh, make me so uh, passionate in, in this society. This is our example. I can give you the example of how we can make the hydrogen city. This is the uh, the the picture of 2010 uh, that Japan already implemented the uh, fuel cell on the household. So uh, they, they also supply uh, with the hydrogen from the steel industry around them, around this uh, community. And this uh, covering with the university. I ever go to Bangli, yeah, I see that uh, location also similarly like this. This is a uh, there is a, um, um, well, not capital area, but uh, surrounding by uh, university and then a good uh, local government. And so the opportunity of the industry also uh, can be created over there. So this is uh, one area that are covering all of our uh, things. So the hydrogen could be stuck at here. Uh, the next one is, uh, this is the, uh, I visit uh, in 2000, uh, seven, I think, in, in Tokyo. Uh, I visit the Tokyo Gas and they created the uh, infrastructure. Firstly, they created the uh, hydrogen station. I, um, 
I'm already heard about the hydrogen station in Sarawak, and I want to go there to, to see to see your facility. That I have uh, maybe in this year I will uh, go to see that. Um, and you know, in Korea also the same do the same things. They make the hydrogen pipe, and then they uh, make some of ecosystem uh, around the area. Uh, they uh, putting the charging station, and then how to. Uh, produce the hydrogen maybe from a solar panel and also they uh, starting the use of this hydrogen in in several locations <clears throat> and many of them uh, using the fuel cells in the uh, household or residential application uh, I think this is uh, for a backup power and uh, several uh, around here using the uh, on the smart farm they're using the fuel cells also. So uh, this is the, the example of uh, the hydrogen city. It is in Korea, it's just built in 20, uh, in the last year. So I think it would be interesting if, uh, well, especially Indonesia can have it in, in Kalimantan on the others. Now, I'm showing you about uh, the hydrogen challenge in Indonesia because uh, Dr. P. Muhammad uh, gave me a title about the islands. So I think about the uh, opportunity of the renewable energy in many islands here. The biggest one is, of course, uh, Jawa. Uh, the biggest consumption of the energy uh, is Jawa. And we have uh, geothermal, we have uh, coal. Now, now we have coal power plant. Uh, so much electricity. Uh, that come from coal not right now in Java. We have the excess uh, electricity also in Java, Java Bali, Java Bali. Bali is right here. And uh, we have excess uh, electricity around here, but supply by a coal. And then uh, now PLN uh, thinking about how to use uh, the excess one. And uh, if we talk about the Sumatra Islands, Sumatra Islands, uh, we have a hydro, we have a geothermal also, uh, but I will not suggest it if you uh, putting the solar right uh, over here because the solar intensity is much bigger in the East Indonesia. And uh, talking about the uh, Sulawesi Island, we have several, we have the opportunity of wind also, and then we have a solar uh, potential of uh, solar, and we have geothermal and a little bit hydro. And then in Kalimantan Island, there is no geothermal, but we have a big hydro at here. It's Sungai Kayan. It's a uh, nine gigawatt potential of the hydro in, in here. Uh, that would be supply uh, to the new capital. So uh, another island is, uh, the big one is Papua. We have a big uh, river also at here. This is Membramo River. So. Uh, the opportunity of the renewable energy from hydro would be, I think, uh, to, uh, 20, more than 20 uh, gigawatt, I think, uh, could be uh, supply from here. And then uh, the possibility of a wind turbine. And, and around here, we have a solar. Now, there is a separate project, the hydrogen at here. They will make the green hydrogen from here. Uh, this is, uh, they will um, setting up the solar cell in uh, 30 uh, megawatt and will produce uh, the hydrogen and convert it to the power of using the fuel cells and uh, will supply on grid. So this is uh, the green hydrogen project. At here, there is a green hydrogen project also doing by Pertamina. Uh, that's coming up from uh, geothermal. And then we have several uh, hydrogen and ammonia, green ammonia here uh, from the more than six uh, program now uh, making the green hydrogen and ammonia at here. And the others also from, from the uh, Kalimantan Island. But all of this is the uh, on the feasibility study right now. So. Uh, my, I, I'm thinking about uh, if, if this Sumatra Island would be uh, would be the 
producer of the hydrogen, we can have the hydrogen highway over here. And then, of course, uh, the hydropower hydrogen production will be supplied in the uh, Kalimantan and and here we can get uh, the green electricity. So that is uh, the challenge in Indonesia and you are already know about the conversion uh, of the uh, electrolyzer uh, to make uh, the hydrogen. Um, this is just a scheme of the green hydrogen. You must think about the size of the solar cell and you must think about the size of the electrolyzer and, and so on. So I will show you our uh, activity in, in Brin right now. We have 100 kilowatt of fuel cells, uh, 100 kilowatt of uh, solar panel at the rooftop. And then from here, we want to make a green hydrogen. Uh, but now our prototype is only one kilowatt of photovoltaic to make the hydrogen uh, just uh, using the, uh, we, we make a, a, a electrolyzer, uh, PEM electrolyzer, and also the solid oxide electrolyzer have been done in our uh, research. Uh, and then uh, this is the example of our green hydrogen prototyping. Uh, not yet uh, get from the 100 kilowatt, but we now having uh, two kilowatts and we try to make it, uh, to make the scale up of this, a prototype in the next year and we try to implement it the vertical wind turbine from uh, our ex house uh, laboratory and then uh, the electricity from here going to the electrolyzer here and then we store it the uh, the hydrogen that coming up from the electrolyzer and then uh, want to uh, supply the hydrogen to be here and uh, be using the fuel cells at here well, this is the, the concept of a green hydrogen uh, prototyping. Next to the uh, biotype of uh, the hydrogen, we already have a, a scheme, a project, a several project here that we uh, produce the biohydrogen. I think this uh, UKM also uh, have a big uh, program uh, of the biohydrogen. We have a, a really close relation also, also with the UKM in this. Uh, our biohydrogen prototyping is located also at a Brin Serpong area. Uh, we're trying to make uh, microbes that uh, collect from the sludge over the uh, pome, uh, the, this the um, the waste uh, location from the uh, palm industry, and we have uh, NDH uh, forty five microbes that we growing to make a hydrogen rich and then uh, want to scaling up until uh, one meter cubic of uh, of sludge and then we want to um, create uh, more uh, hydrogen gas at here and the next one we will try uh, it's already starting uh, since uh, 2009 and now we're getting uh, this one this step uh, at one meter cubic and then we will, uh, the next one, we will move to the uh, 100, but but not yet get the funding of, for this. So we try to uh, reach uh, this program. This is the special uh, treatment that we use biofilter right here to reaching, uh, to have, to make rich uh, the hydrogen uh, gas that coming up from uh, uh, bio, uh, bio reactor here. So uh, this is our new program here. We have several researchers that doing the uh, biohydrogen that's uh, coming out from many any ways, uh, cocoa, sugary metal waste, and, and of course, uh, pome and sagu and also algae. We have also want to purify this uh, gas. And then in the plan, we will uh, make a hydrogen uh, storage uh, to uh, this uh, biohydrogen and want to supply the gas engine generator. So that's uh, our uh, planning. And from the gas engine generator, we can get the electricity and, and uh, we can supply another things uh, from there. So uh, this, uh, this is the, our new topic also on photocatalysis uh, hydrogen production that doing uh, with the collaboration with the University of Indonesia, 
we have several students that are doing the uh, photo catalysis at here. And the interesting things is uh, we use the ammonia wastewater. And uh, in the next one, we use the antibiotic wastewater. So, uh, well, you, you can see in the journal uh, uh, the pro production uh, from here. Uh, we got the um, several electrodes to combine, uh, to compare, and then uh, we see the hydrogen production uh, over here. And uh, now we're trying to got the by the hydrogen production from pharmaceutical waste. Uh, this is the antibiotic waste, and we will use the electrocoagulation photocatalysis here. And uh, we, we, we have uh, ongoing uh, doctoral candidate at here to, to make uh, various of pollutant of uh, pharmaceutical waste. So uh, the next one, I will uh, show you the, um, the our activity on, on fuel cells and hydrogen application. Uh, talking about the green hydrogen, you already know that uh, if we produce hydrogen, we can use in the many things, in the transportation, in the industry, and also the electrical gear, grid. Um, and also the next one, uh, talking about the carbon recycle, we must think about the uh, ammonia also, because uh, we need the uh, carbon, or or we want to make uh, a methanol, make, make uh, methane, uh, and so on. We can capturing the uh, CO two, and then uh, we convert it to uh, other things of chemicals. So uh, this is the rounding the ammonia energy will be the answer. Also, uh, how how uh, we can use uh, the CO two uh, to react with the uh, gas and then uh, got uh, the other chemicals. I think uh, this study have been already uh, done by several researchers, but now industrial uh, area is, have moving, talking about the ammonia energy. We have a big fertilizer industry in Indonesia, and we're thinking uh, about how to reduce the, the, the CO2 emitter that coming up from uh, the process. So in uh, to lowering the emission, uh, not only fertilizer industry, PLN also doing the co-firing. They're using, you're usually going, uh, doing the co-firing with biomass, but uh, in, in last year, uh, they're starting to use hydrogen and ammonia to do the co-firing in power plant. So you can see, this is the, uh, the burning of the uh, power plant, there is uh, no such of uh, um, uh, poor, uh, not, not really, um, in, in the step of the uh, experiment, uh, they now uh, successfully to be 2% uh, of ammonia combined with coal. So uh, the problem here is how we can reduce the NOx the nickel green oxide, the NOx level is a little bit higher. So it would it must be uh, lower than the NOx if we uh, do co-firing uh, using the ammonia in the uh, power plant. This is just a start in, in uh, October and hopefully it can reach uh, more than 2%. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not still about, uh, I'm not talking about the uh, finance here. So uh, we just only talking about how to reduce uh, the emission. So trying to combine uh, between coal and ammonia is the first step that we reduce the emission. So um, about the uh, hydrogen utilization, uh, you know already uh, the type of the fuel cells we can uh, give uh, we can make a utilization of the fuel cells and uh, really um, disparate uh, industry here. Um, in the small scale, we can see the drone, uh, forklift, and then uh, in the uh, up to uh, five, we can see the household and more than 10 uh, kilowatt, we can see uh, the passenger car and also uh, 
well, almost uh, 100, we can see the bus and also the others. Uh, uh, in the, uh, maybe in the, this year, in this year, there is an application of the airplane that using the hydrogen. This is uh, uh, to be uh, very big issues also in, in the aviation industry because uh, have, uh, the Airbus and also the, the Zero Avia have uh, successfully uh, flying the hydrogen uh, plant. So, so I think uh, the use of the, uh, the hydrogen and the airspace uh, and the uh, aviation industry, it show that the hydrogen is safe, not like a previous image that the hydrogen can be explored everywhere, but uh, we can see that the if we use the hydrogen, there is a, no problem of the safety if we are uh, concerned about the, uh, the utilization and uh, and uh, have a regulation uh, to make the hydrogen uh, application in in this area. And uh, you know, in in long term, in long term, the utilization of hydrogen would be uh, the highest in the transportation area. Now we talk talking about the uh, gas industry for the industrial application, but. But in the long term, in 2040 uh, and 50, we will see uh, that uh, transportation would be the huge uh, demand of the, the hydrogen. And of course, what is the key technology that we must uh, concern? I think this academician or more in the uh, industry must think about the key technology of that. The key technology is how to make the electrolyzer and how to make the fuel cells. Because uh, if we're talking about the green hydrogen, we're talking about the electrolyzer. If we're talking about the transportation, we need the fuel cells. So I think this ecosystem uh, should be considered, you must think about the, all of the ecosystem here uh, and thinking about in the academic area, we must thinking about the key technology here. Uh, this is uh, the, the um, I think you are all chemists, so so uh, you can see that the hydrogen uh, and oxygen can be uh, uh, can be react in the uh, in the electrochemical processes and make a, a, a electricity that's called fuel cells. And you can see the uh, electrolyzer is how to break how to split the uh, water into the uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So. Uh, in UKM, in Institute of Fuel Cell, there is so much acceleration of the fuel cells uh, development, yeah, including membrane and including electrolyte and so on, uh, electrolyte, uh, electrode uh, catalyst and, and so on. So uh, you can see that the, the reaction is uh, around the how to control the electron transfer in the uh, inside of the fuel cells. This is the important things if we want to know about the uh, more specific uh, reaction in the fuel cells. Uh, well, uh, well, the last one, I will show you the uh, our journey of the fuel cells and hydrogen uh, development. I think this has happened also in UKM. So uh, we have the same things to do. Uh, we accelerate the membrane uh, development and also catalyst. And we have also several uh, things to, to make the fuel cells stack. And uh, from now, we not only doing the PEM fuel cell, but doing the solid toxic fuel cells. And we're doing how to produce the uh, hydrogen from bio and from uh, also the water. And uh, uh, this is, uh, I will skip off this. This is the manufacture of the fuel cells that, that we are do. I think uh, you have seen this one also. And um, the interesting things in to make the fuel cells, how we can manage uh, the water consumption and how we can manage uh, the gas inside the fuel cells and uh, how we can treat the uh, catalyst loading uh, inside the fuel cells. This is the interesting things. And uh, they need uh, know-how to make a stack of the fuel cells. This is very long time ago. This is my 
uh, photo since uh, 2006. I, I'm doing this. And also at that time, I think uh, Professor uh, Van Ramley and pro uh, several doctors in UKM to start uh, this also. So we have a close collaboration at here. And now I'm talking about the industry. I'm pushing the industry and local industry in Indonesia to make a component at here. Because uh, in Indonesia, we have automatic industry, uh, uh, automobile industry. So they supply many uh, compartment to uh, the Toyota, to Honda, to several auto, uh, auto um, mobile. And I think they can uh, they can make the fuel uh, from the beginning. So now we're pushing the industry to get uh, to get know how at here. Uh, now Brin also doing the uh, several uh, things uh, joining with the industry. And this is our collaboration with the um, University of uh, uh, Parahyangan. We, we have a, a nano root array uh, of the catalyst that growing in the uh, carbon paper. And then we have uh, several development on the carbon papers also. We have uh, several scientists at here. And of course, uh, we joining with the UKM with the solid oxide fuel cells. This is an interesting thing also. Uh, they're doing by Dr. Jarod, uh, Professor Jarod here. And uh, they have a collaboration with local industry at Timah, uh, uh, Indonesia. And they uh, have a zirconia, uh, local zirconia and successfully to make a solid oxide fuel cells. And uh, this is I want to show you about the um, the application of the fuel cells in motorcycle. This is have been done with the uh, with team of the UKM also. Yeah, uh, this uh, I will show you the same things. I'm sorry, this is in Indonesia. Ini adalah bokar yang kita modif dengan fotovoltaik dan fuel cell. Fuel cellnya sebesar dua setengah kilowatt dikontrol lalu gas hidrogen ada di bangku depan. Yang ini fuel cell tanpa PV, fuel cell dengan kapasitas 1 kilowatt. Ini ada kontrolnya, gasnya ada di sini. Ini adalah dua jenis uh, prototipe kendaraan hidrogen yang Oke, okay. that's uh, our activity and, and since uh, since pandemi ya. Yeah since uh, last pandemic or <clears throat> in this uh, three years uh, we make the uh, the fuel cells application in and in, uh, in motorcycle and uh, we convert the electric vehicle at here and uh, to make uh, the hydrogen vehicle uh, we uh, we make a uh, several this is uh, our team uh, from the electronic guys from the uh, mechanical guys and so on so uh, this is uh, the first motorcycle uh, of hydrogen since 2009. You can see this. Uh, it still happened. It's still uh, being uh, right right now. So I, I can tell you that uh, fuel cells have a long durability. Uh, it's already almost uh, 13 years. So I think uh, the fuel cell itself uh, have so much higher durability uh, comparing to the battery. This is uh, our prototype also uh, with the one kilowatt that we mentioned uh, before. And then uh, this is the golf car. Why, we, why I put the photovoltaic right here? Because uh, the student wants to know about how to uh, produce the renewable uh, electricity from the photovoltaic coming to the uh, battery and then we can uh, do the same thing with the fuel cells uh, from the oxygen from the gas uh, going to the battery so the combination uh, this uh, we can um, can make uh, several uh, tests uh, right here so now uh, this is the recent uh, the recent product of our uh, team uh, led by Dr. Hamid. They're making uh, the refueling station, the mobile refueling station to supply the the mini hydrogen right here. Uh, and 
and we make uh, we will produce uh, the electricity from 100 kilowatt of uh, solar cell and we will put the electrolyzer and then we uh, can store it to the hydrogen and supply to the uh, prototype of uh, vehicle here so uh talking about uh this is uh, the conclusion of our uh, this uh, would be our uh, my talk uh the price of the hydrogen now the the highest one is the green one and the lowest one now we have it uh, in the industry is the gray hydrogen and then the brown hydrogen it's around uh, one until two dollars but in the green hydrogen we still have a uh, four until uh, six uh, dollar maybe in Japan I asking to the uh, NEDO they uh, produce the green hydrogen uh, for ten dollars of ki per kilogram of the hydrogen so uh, it's still uh, not really usable but I think the price will be going down and uh, this is just um, oh I, I will keep this um wait wait wait, wait. um i will talking to you about the uh the hydrogen price and on the road in japan uh there is a regulation that uh, the hydrogen price uh, should now is uh, 10 dollars about uh, 1200 yen uh, per kilogram so if we going to the uh, hydrogen filling station, this is located at uh, near near Tokyo Tower. Uh, if, if you go to Japan or you go to another uh, country, you can see it freely. So uh, they selling the hydrogen price still in ten dollars <laughs> per kilogram, around ten dollars per kilogram. This is with tax, it would be one thousand two hundred uh, yen per kilogram. So this is uh, the picture. So uh, I think Malaysia and uh, Indonesia uh, should make a national hydrogen strategy, hydrogen roadmap, so we can invite uh, the investor to to our country to make uh, the society much more bigger, uh, more more better. Uh, no, there is no carbon uh, around us. So we can uh, have a good lifestyle style here. And uh, OK, uh, this is the hydrogen roadmap in Indonesia, but not roadmap, not really roadmap, but this is just a study uh, of the uh, Ministry of Energy that Indonesia would be a very huge demand of green hydrogen also in the next uh, uh, carbon neutral year in, in 2060. So we can uh, see the reach, uh, the increase of the uh, hydrogen is start on the 2030 and then will increase significantly in 2040. It means that uh, the hydrogen uh, price could be more cheaper around 2040. So we can see that. Okay, I uh, think uh, I, if I have a, still a one minute, Dr. Mohamed. Can, 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 can. Okay, no problem, okay, no problem. Okay. Just uh, show you uh, the implementation of the fuel cells. Uh, it's already uh, has been uh, using uh, in Indonesia, but used as the backup power of fuel uh, power station. The backup power of BTS station. This uh, they uh, already have the genset, uh, but they switch to the fuel cells. So we can see that uh, already uh now it's more than 800 uh, bts this is in the 2012 there is a 472 bts that supply by hydrogen so they use five kilogram uh, five kilowatt of fuel cells uh at here this is the fuel cells and then and beside that you can see the uh, the hydrogen tank over here so this is uh, have been implemented in the several islands of Indonesia, all over the Indonesia. And now would be um, not, not only 800, it's already 1,000 units uh, has been installed as a backup power. Uh, so uh, 
this is the uh, showing the photo of the implementation of the uh, fuel cells. This is in the rooftop because fuel cells are very silent. No, not like a genset that uh, shaking the uh, compartment, but uh, it's very silent because we only have the electrochemical reaction inside. Um, and it can be used uh, all over the uh, building. And this is the unique things that uh, they putting, the company is uh, putting the uh, fuel cells uh, in the remote area. This is several uh, struggling, uh, they struggling to deliver uh, the hydrogen. Firstly, they deliver the gas, but uh, in, in about uh, five years uh, later, they are starting the, to deliver uh, the methanol, uh, combined with water, the methanol water, it's called hydroplast, and it's more, much more easy to deliver. But the fuel cells compartment have some added uh, steam reforming uh, uh, unit to embed the fuel cells. So the hydrogen, uh, uh, the methanol, uh, con the water containing methanol coming to the steam reforming, and then uh, go to the fuel cells and uh, go to the electricity. So uh, I will show you, this is the, uh, the unique uh, study that just have been done uh, in the last month. Uh, we calculated in the specific island. This is in remote area. It's uh, in East Indonesia. It's called Medang uh, Islands. You know the profile of the electricity here. Uh, now they have photovoltaic and they have a battery and they have a genset here and they the supply the profile of the electricity uh, that supplied by photovoltaic is right here in the green one yeah and you can see the genset uh, start uh, doing the activity from, from the uh, night until uh, the morning this is the red one and you know this is the excess of the power okay and if we know the excess of the power because uh, not so much much uh, electricity that need in the daytime, uh, we can use this electricity go to the electrolyzer. That's why we calculated the uh, the implementation of the electrolyzer and fuel cell in this island, and uh, we collecting the uh, implementation of this fuel cell. You can see the graphic here. This is the a uh, blue one is the time of the fuel cells work, and then uh, you can see this is the 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 excess uh, electricity from the daytime uh, we can you can go to the um, to use this to electrolyzer so you can see the red one this is the supply electricity uh, that we calculated right now so hopefully this is would be um, the yes the the uh, to expand your imagination that we can use uh, the fuel cells even in the small scale but but we still have a demand of the diesel here still just a little bit now yeah that's uh, uh that's the last thing that i want to show you i want to share you about the uh study uh and this would be implemented in the in this uh, remote area so uh, finally, uh, I will invite also all of the students uh, to join uh, our laboratory to coming up here uh, to join our hydrogen research group. And uh, we hopefully you can visit our uh, website also. It's IFE or ID. And uh, I will really lovely to uh, have uh, your question uh, in this event. Thank you so much. Uh, this is our upcoming event uh, in Hydrogen Summit in June. Please come to Indonesia for this. Thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Enya, for your interesting uh, talk. Okay, And then uh, just to update you, roughly we have about like 100, 130 participants in the Zoom and about 30 more on the Thank Facebook, you. okay? And there are some questions. So are you ready for the questions, Prof? Sure, thank you. I'm sure. happy to answer okay. it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me read a few uh, things. Okay, there's a first question from Miss Hanim, okay? 
uh, she asked about the costing actually uh, because just now you share some of the data on the price okay uh, is it uh, only from the other country or is there any uh, studies done based on the scenario in Indonesia oh yes uh, the price is uh, just only the study from the journal and the other country and Japan uh, price so not yet in Indonesia but uh, now we also calculated the uh, like I show you the uh, the price of the uh, system that using the fuel cells and we make the hydrogen it could be cost around uh, uh, well around uh, still six dollar for for the green one six until eight dollar for the green one but uh, but we have calculated in, in Indonesia if we use the price of the uh, electricity of hydropower it would uh, only cost uh, below than uh, two dollars per kilogram of the hydrogen so the lowest one the lowest price of the hydrogen is coming up from the hydropower that's uh, our calculation at here this is uh, the indonesia price um i think i have it but uh um i i skip the answer of your question <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I will say i will say because i skip it that's that's why you uh you 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 questioning me so uh this is the example of our calculation this is uh our calculation in indonesia we have if we do the hydrogen production from the geothermal would be cost uh, around five dollars per kilogram and then if we uh now the the hydrogen price from the coal is around three it's around three until four this is uh the price of the hydrogen uh the the hydrogen uh business right now in indonesia it's uh the coal uh, from the coal but in hydro you can see one and a half one and a half a dollar uh, per kilogram of the hydrogen and uh this is the 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 um the calculation of uh of our study in how to uh to use the excess power in java we have the excess power in java island uh but it still come from coal and then we calculated the uh price of the uh, hydrogen would be 3.5 kilogram per, uh, per kilogram hydrogen sorry per kilogram hydrogen uh, but if we have a, a incentive with a, a innovative incentive of energy transition uh, funding we can reduce uh, one dollar of that price well it's around around that price Okay, so thank you. Okay, there's uh, this question from all over from France. Okay, there's uh, Mr. Imama. Okay, he's uh, working in the automotive industry. Okay, according to him, now uh, the automotive industry is moving towards more on EV. Okay, and uh, even though they claim uh, the EV actually is green, but it's not truly green because of the usage of lithium in the uh, battery system. So his question is, is is really possible for hydrogen to be truly green for automotive industry? Ah, oh, it's a good question <laughs> because it's difficult to answer. But uh, as as you know, uh, as you mentioned also about the lithium and also the uh, a green green hydrogen, uh, still have a battery. So we still depends on battery. We still depends on a solar cell, solar panel. And if we're talking about the uh, circular economy, uh, this is not really green. That's why on the uh, World Hydrogen Conference last year, we all, all of the researchers now talking about the life cycle assessment. So it is really new, but um, I think I can share you some things. This is really important that uh, we now talking about the uh, life cycle assessment because many of the researcher told us that uh, I'm sorry uh, that not uh, the green hydrogen is not really green. Then 
the blue one. So, uh, and even with the gray one. So we must thinking about all of the uh, life cycle assessment. So we, we will, uh, many researchers now is calculating how much we reduce uh, the CO2, not talking about the green one or uh, the blue one, no, but they uh, talking about how much uh, they can reduce the CO2. So uh, as you know, uh, lithium is not so green. I do agree with that uh, opinion also. Um, in, the, in the term of circular economy, uh, that's why many researchers also told us that uh, uh, there is some uh, research and need some research on life cycle assessment. And uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm now joining the task force of the hydrogen that uh, talking about the life cycle assessment uh, around the G20 members. And uh, we're talking about the uh, how to recycle it. And uh, the basic um, opinion is the green is not really green than the gray, even the gray one. So uh, this is still still undergoing uh, discussion. But don't worry. This is uh, so much uh, opinion on that uh, on that also because a battery guys uh, told us that it could be recycled. Yeah, uh, there is so many um, uh, way to recycle also the lithium uh, battery. Uh, our team members also doing that uh, the recycle things. So I think in 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 uh, I hopefully the circular economy is uh, is being done in, in, in the next uh, several years. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, yes, Prof. So okay, the green prof, would, uh, be, a... would be the really green. <laughs> we are moving towards the true green. Okay, uh, okay Prof. Uh, there's another question. So, okay, from uh, Mr. Ekmal. He's from Tabung Haji Plantations. Okay, and I think he's uh, more interested in the application of a uh, fuel cell in a uh, pump oil plantation, but especially for heavy vehicle. So is there any example of, of a fuel cell uh, uh, no, uh, application for heavy vehicles, maybe like a tractor or like, you know, a forklift, all this thing, yeah? Um, yeah. Um, there is uh, two company in Indonesia right now. It's called uh, Yamaha and Komatsu want to uh, make a forklift of fuel cells. But now they uh, do the study with the Brin right now. Um, and they will, but the the location of uh, how they use the forklift is inside the warehouse. So there is no um, there is no barrier to to make uh, the forklift of the uh, fuel cells. Just only need uh, two kilowatt of fuel cells until uh, five kilowatt of fuel cells, and then you can got the uh, forklift. That's an ongoing project with uh, inside the Yamaha industry. We have uh, members also in the uh, in the, our society. There is a movement about the uh, how to make a towing, not only forklift but towing car. It's a uh, uh, some kind of uh, motor that uh, it doing in the logistic uh, system. And the heavy duty vehicle, it would be start with uh, Pertamina and Marubeni uh, will start in the uh, port uh, terminal. They will use uh, the hydrogen truck but now still under uh, the pre-feasibility study. Next year would be the feasibility study. Now, I don't know. Uh, um, it, uh, it will use uh, the fuel cells inside the, inside the truck vehicle. And the, uh, the location, the road, uh, I think it's uh, not really uh, off-road, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's a flat road, but still mm, the next two years on, or uh, uh, well, the fastest one is uh, next year. I don't know, in, in Malaysia, is there uh, already have a truck or, or, or uh, have uh, not, not, not or truck yet, but uh, uh, we have a, a real car, okay, uh, developed by the Fusel Institute, okay. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there is, I know uh, there's some uh, you know, uh, work done in uh, India as well. 
they're working on the bus uh, uh, yeah. for uh, all these things. Yeah. Okay. So uh, moving to the next question, Prof. Okay. So this question actually from Prof. Uh, Puan Yatim. Okay. She's uh, from the School of Business in UKM. So her question is, okay, what, did, what are the immediate challenges in adopting uh, hydrogen? Is it economic, finance, or policies? What, what stopped that we don't, we don't take hydrogen now? Mm, I think the policy is um, it's a good, a, a good will. Uh, the government uh, now have a good will because they want to reduce the emission. But the barrier is a finance. It's, um, mm, I think uh, I'm also try to um, socialize that uh, it should be an innovative funding of, for the energy transition. And uh, if we have uh, an example to do it, so I think we can do it in the finance. Especially for hydrogen, we must think more more longer, not just we can produce the hydrogen, but we can store it and then we can deliver it and then still we can use it. So uh, we, we must uh, make the long uh, way if we want to calculate it. The, uh, I think uh, the financial uh, guy are, are always asking me about the IRR, IRR return investment and then uh, how to make um, a good ROI, yeah, yeah, is that's the that's the only question of from the bankers. So uh, I always want to answer it that hydrogen must go to the uh, to the X to the X. It means that uh, we must go to the ammonia, we must go to the methanation, um, and uh, the several way to do not only to produce hydrogen, how cause it, but we want we 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 must calculate it in the. Uh, in the next process of that. And uh, the important things is uh, in Indonesia, if we have a carbon market, uh, the carbon uh, price, um, be because the carbon market now has been uh, pending with the government, uh, the carbon price only uh, two until five dollars uh, per ton of CO2. I don't know in Malaysia. Um, maybe more higher or 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 what uh, the I'm carbon not so sure the price, <laughs> not oh, sure the yeah. price yet. <laughs> yeah because if we compare to the european union uh, the carbon price uh, would be 20 until 40 dollars per ton of co2 now from indonesia uh, uh, the the uh, the UNFCCC just calculated the carbon price uh, from Indonesia only two until five dollars. So now have been stopped. Uh, we want a uh, more higher price of the carbon because we um, need higher investment to lowering the carbon, but the carbon price is uh, not so uh, big as the European. That's uh, our question also, because uh, if we have a carbon price, the hydrogen implementation, uh, it would be more smooth. Oh, there is a, uh, there is a chat. Oh, no, uh, 100 uh, euro per is here. That's a good uh, price, really good price. I think mm. uh, we can uh, thank uh, welcome Prof. Thank Klassen. you, Mr. Peter. <laughs> uh, there is a chat uh, here. Yeah, Prof. Peter Naklassen from uh, Netherlands. Yeah, from, from Indonesia, just only five. Uh, no, no, it's not, not so good. If we have uh, at least $40, uh, the hydrogen implementation would be good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Prof. Peter, sorry, do you want to say I, anything? Are you answering your question or not? I think uh, Prof. Peter, she on her mic. No, I couldn't hear Prof. Peter, uh, maybe some other time. Okay, uh, uh, allow me to uh, move to uh, another question, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, there's a question, okay? Uh, we can use hydrogen, okay, in uh, fuel cell and also in uh, hydrogen uh, combustion uh, technology. 
So hydrogen combustion technology and also fuel cell. So your opinion on uh, both of these technology? Ah, oh. mm, the combustion. Um, well, if we combine the hydrogen with the natural gas, um, the most efficient uh, combustion would be three, three, uh, three zero percent, thirty percent of the hydrogen and seventy percent of methane. There's a uh, um, many uh, gas uh, engine as uh, in a good efficiency as uh, the the combination uh, both hydrogen and methane and thirty and seventy. There is a 40 and 60, but not really a good one. And comparing to the um, combustion, uh, now Toyota already uh, mentioned that they have uh, the combustion engine uh, for the hydrogen uh, to use in the, in the passenger car. Um, I'm really not the, uh, know about the combustion, but I think uh, the efficiency of the color, uh, uh, calorie, uh, the energy, the energy that uh, can be calculated, the fuel cells, it's three times more efficient than the combustion. But um, this is that's the theoretical uh, things. I don't know if there is uh, some uh, innovation inside the uh, engine. Uh, it could be more efficient. Uh, hopefully, it will be. Uh, and and if the hydrogen combustion could be on the passenger car, that's much um, uh, much more uh, um, efficient, uh, um, practical to convert uh, the fossil engine to the uh, gas engine. Uh, but in the terms of uh, the calorie burn and energy combust uh, energy uh, conversion, uh, there is uh, three times more higher with the fuel cells one. Mm. Personally, I I I more agree with uh, doing with the fuel cells because it's more um, more silence. Uh, there is no. Um, yeah, there, there is no safety issues. Yeah, uh, comparing to the to the uh, combustion one. Okay, bro. I think uh, maybe yeah. this is the last question. Okay, uh, it's from the okay. Facebook actually. Okay, so uh, we've been talking about the good things about hydrogen from start. Okay, and uh, looking at the, every technology, there's always a good and bad things. So, is there anything that hidden? Uh, no, a uh, risk. Uh, associated to hydrogen uh, uh, application for energy mm. based on your opinion <laughs> the hidden the hidden agenda <laughs> uh, any risk okay maybe any impact in the long term mm. because uh, any technology there's always a plus and minus yes uh, the issue is safety the safety factor of the hydrogen and uh, the LCA the circular economy that's uh, uh now the problem of the uh how we can create the hydrogen society and uh we need more attention on the infrastructure we need more finance on the infrastructure but learning from the uh japan movement i saw from the uh, around 2000 until now uh they really aggressive and they have uh, so much funding to to make the implementation of hydrogen. And uh, luckily, the price inside those uh, that country, the Japan country, it's much more higher than abroad. So uh, as for example, uh, they imported the liquid hydrogen from Australia, which is, it looks so expensive, but no. The answer, uh, the answer of Mitsubishi that doing that is, uh, no, this is uh, the economic feasible for us because the price inside the uh, Japan is much more higher and they want to import also the much more ammonia from Indonesia. I think uh, the Brunei, uh, Brunei near us, uh, Brunei already uh, export also um, methyl cyclohexane, right? 
in in last yes. year in the pandemic yeah. uh, season they firstly True. they announced us that uh, methyl cyclohexane have been imported uh, have been exported to japan firstly and uh, but but that not uh, not the green one okay that's the gray one but uh, the economic happened and they used to burn to 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 supply the uh, transportation to supply to the uh, grid and so on and uh, i think japan have a unique uh, condition that's why the hydrogen could be implemented and i think that uh, that experience uh, not just implemented in even in indonesia or in malaysia we must thinking about our resources because uh, uh, yeah the hydrogen could be uh, created from from everywhere from uh, many resources uh, then uh, we must think about the implementation as i mentioned you about the remote area this is a specific uh, uh, isolated island but we can implement it fuel cell over there and match the economic uh, economically feasible because an isolated area uh, the price of the electricity in Indonesia is different from the uh, Java Island. The Java Island is so, well, it's common common price. This is only uh, 70, 70 cents uh, per kilowatt hours. And then at the located uh, isolated area would be uh, more than uh, more than one dollar. Yeah. Uh, ah, no, no, no. Seribu tiga ratus. It's a, no, I'm sorry. A seven cent, seven cent comparing to the thirteen cent. So, um, the the hidden. Uh, well, I think uh, the management of uh, risk uh, would be the important things um, if we implement it in the specific area because not all over the uh, people know about the fuel cells, know about the hydrogen. Uh, they it's it much um should be educated first and then i think uh well uh, step by step we must educate the people and even with uh the using of the photovoltaic now uh, there is in 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 specific island that the people right there didn't know about the photovoltaic itself it it must struggle to explain the uh, fuel cells and hydrogen. So I think uh, the the near term and the near years, uh, we just starting to uh, make a visibility study of the hydrogen inside the Indonesia. But hopefully, uh, the implementation in Southeast Asia, including Malaysia, Singapore, and uh, Brunei, would be uh, would be increased. Okay, Prof. I think uh, we have taken a lot of your time. Okay, it's already almost uh, four, four o'clock in Indonesian time. Okay, and uh, I think about 90 minutes you have uh, spare with us. So I think uh, uh, today I learned a lot, okay, especially on the movement uh, in Indonesia. Uh, indeed, there's no single solution uh, for our uh, way to achieve a net zero emission and uh, hydrogen mm -hmm. is one way to go. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on behalf of the, all the audience today, I, I'd like to thank you, okay, for sp sparing your time, and on behalf of the UK YC Chair for Sustainability, also I'll thank you for your time as well. So, to all the audience, okay, uh, please, uh, uh, maybe can uh, open your camera so we take a uh, one uh, photo together, okay, and uh, as a uh, uh, no uh, please help. Okay, please open your camera. <clears throat> Okay, please uh, open your camera, everyone. Okay, yeah. All of the uh, audience is from UKM? Uh, no, no, Prof. Uh, we have a uh, Prof. Peter from Netherlands, and then just now there's an ah. audience from uh, Qatar as well. And oh, then, nice uh, it. yeah, so it's open for everyone, Prof. Yeah. Uh, I think Encik Iqmal from uh, Tabu Haji, and uh, we have from Sarawak Energy as well. So it's a wide oh, hello, uh, range of audience. Yeah. Yeah. Noha, okay? Uh, kita tunggu kejap eh. Ada yang uh, tak buka lagi. Baru buka? Okay, okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three, smile.
Okay, uh, Fistar. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so uh, to know more about our events, so please uh, uh no, uh, no, follow our uh, social media. Okay, until then, so thank you to Prof Inia. Thank you to all the audience. Have a nice day. Okay, and see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. Thank you so much, uh, all the members. Thank you, thank you Prof. Uh, yeah, hopefully I can go to Malaysia. <laughs> and and some. You're always welcome. <laughs> yeah, you're always welcome. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, the, the conference is uh, also one of the committee and actually I joined the Jog Jakarta one when I was a student. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Uh, let me know if you go to Indonesia also. Soon, soon. Uh, maybe uh, for ABBS, I'll try to come uh, in uh, Indonesia. Okay, that's good. Okay, nice uh, to have you here, all of the members. Have a good thank time. You, yeah, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, bro. Hah? Tu dekat dalam grup ada. Ni.